and they will anticipate this first stroke and be ready. Now, when is all this going to play out? I mean, you know, what, what time frame will all this probably happen? My guess is mid to middle, late 21st century. This century. So within the lifetime of my grandchildren, so if you were young, your children, they, they will be caught up in all this horror that they expect to, to, to happen. Frankly, I'm glad I'm alive now. I'm in my 60s. I have long, longevity genes. My father's 91 and fine. His grandfather lived to 97. His great-grandfather lived to 99. Right. So, so I think I have his longevity genes. So I expect to be around for another 30 years. Now what will I see in the next 30 years? I'll definitely see the debate, that this species dominance debate heat up. Right? It's starting already right? uh, amongst the, the guys, the, the techies who work in this field of artificial brains and artificial intelligence, and, you know, robotics and so on. They are already quite quite well informed and conscious of, of this growing problem this, this problem of species dominance they're, they're aware of the issue but the general public not quite yet but that's changing for example 2006 the British BBC with their horizon series of science type documentaries they came out with a marvelous documentary called human version 2 Sort of post post human, and uh, so this this issue of species dominance was was a major theme in, in that documentary. Uh, let's see what what else has come out. There there are several movies trying to find distributors now in the U.S. There's uh, one called Transcendent Man, which is about the life story of Ray Kurzweil, and so he's the transcendent man in a sense as an individual. And uh, the film title has, has a double meaning, because if you transcend, you, know, you go beyond man, well, what do you get? Well, cyborg or an artillect, right? So it has two meanings. So ho hopefully, my guess is within five years from, from now, which is 2010, within five years, this issue of species dominance will just be part of the... It'll be in the air, it'll just be part of people's general educational awareness, like, like you know, global warming and overpopulation, nuclear holocaust, and, you know, all, all those big issues that, that, that threaten uh, humanity. But, but we're not, not, not quite there yet. Okay, so uh, let's, let's move on now to the arguments in favour uh, used by the cyborgs. What, what's... You know, this third group, what do what do they what do they want? What 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 are their arguments? Well, they the, the cyborg or cyborgists, they they claim that this whole confrontation between the Terrans and the Cosmos can be avoided. And you, just, you just go around the problem rather than having to you know, bite the bullet. You just you just avoid the problem. Just go around it. How? By having the human race, human beings themselves become cyborgs or artlets. Right? So if all human beings become artlets, there are no human beings left to feel threatened as Terrans. Right? That's, that's the argument. So you can, you can avoid, they say, you can avoid this clash by, by in a sense, removing human beings, by persuading human beings, or everyone, to, to, to do this become become outlets themselves, or cyborgs. Now, that sounds fine in theory, and a lot of a lot of people buy this. I'll, I'll give you some names, uh, well-known names in, in this uh, area, this field of, of discussion. Uh, let's see who, who, well, Ray Kurzweil obviously believes it. Uh, in the in the UK, you have Kevin Warwick also believes it. Um, in the US, uh, my best friend Ben, ben Gertzel also believes it. So a lot of powerful people, influential people, are cyborgian in their philosophy. 
Uh, I don't buy it. And I'll tell you why. I don't know. So I'll give a counter, counter reasoning. If you ask people today, you, know, you, you present all these arguments, and then you ask people to vote, are you fundamentally more cosmist or Terran? The, in fact, this, this was done at, at, at the time of the 2006 BBC documentary on, on human version 2. The, the website corresponding to that program, uh, the public was encouraged to vote, which, which uh, you know, what are people's preferences? They, they feel that humanity should go cosmist or, or Terran. And the result was, it was about a third were, took a very pessimistic view, like uh, my scenario, and about two thirds took Ray Kurzweil's, the, the more optimistic. I mean, Kurt, Kurzweil presents an image where these cyborgs would have a wonderful life, right? Their capacities would increase, and, you know, they could learn a new language in a few seconds, or you know, all sorts of wonderful things. They'd become immortal, not die, no disease, you know, very, very positive. Now, I don't, I don't deny those things could exist. I just feel that uh, Ray Kurzweil and you know, people with similar thinking are not presenting the full picture. Right? They're not placing enough weight, waiting, on the negative side of human nature. I mean, go, go back 20th century. It was the bloodiest, most horrible century in terms of mass killing ever in history. About I don't know, two, three hundred million people died in that century for, for political reasons. You know, wars, genocides, holocausts, ethnic cleansings, right? It was the worst century ever. So who, who is to say that that kind of thing is not going to occur in the 21st century? Especially now with this ideology, this ideological clash, where the stake has never been higher. We're not talking about the survival of countries anymore. We're talking about the survival of us as, as a species. Right? So, so I see when... Uh, so, so already, every, every time I give a talk, I, I tend to invite my audience at the end of the talk to vote. You know, are, are you more, as an individual, are you more inclined to take the cosmos route? Do you think humanity should build these artworks? Or are you more inclined towards the, the Terran route, where you think it's too dangerous, it should never be done, you know, that you're absolutely horrified at the possibility of a, of a major war um, over, over this issue. And my experience is, it's pretty well 50-50. It splits, splits the audience. Now, at first, I thought, hmm, maybe this whole issue is too new, so people don't really know what to think about because they're not sufficiently exposed to all the arguments, right? So, so they're almost voting randomly, and if that happens, you know, you'll get, you expect 50-50. So, after a while, it dawned on me, no, 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 no. These, these people are having the same sort of feelings as I'm having. So, publicly, I'm ambivalent. I'm, I'm feel schizophrenic on this issue. So, on the one hand, you know, the, the awe-inspiring vista of, you know, of cosmism, of creating these godlike creatures that could go anywhere, the, the whole universe, immortal, thinking a million times faster, and unlimited memory, unlimited senses, you know, massively intelligent compared to us, change their form, their structure, you know, microsecond, you know, godlike creatures who, who possibly could even build universes, right? Like uh, I was talking a bit before about theism and deism. Theism is the belief that there's a creator. Now, I find that idea increasingly plausible because if these artifacts do come into, into being, and they truly are, trillions and trillions of times smarter than us, and what would they do with their time? You know, what, what would their goals in life be, their existence? What would they do? Well, just speculation, but maybe maybe they would be so capable they could actually design universes. Right? So in a sense, they, they would become gods. So as human beings, if you're a cosmist, you, you're 
thinking, well, maybe we, we human beings could be part of that process of, of creating godlike creatures so, so capable that they could design whole universes as a, as a kind of science or, or a game that, 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 that they could play. Right. So you have these two very powerful ideologies and some people will be you know, very positively, very powerfully motivated to, to push towards cosmism and others horrified at the idea of a major war between these two, killing huge numbers of people. And I'll talk a bit about the scale of the killing a bit, a bit later when I come to the actual war, the artelect war. So, uh, so humanity, we bitterly divided on this question. And you know, every time I ask people to vote, it splits more or less 50-50. And people are ambivalent as individuals. It's, it's not as though you have more or less 50% cosmos, and there's powerfully cosmos, and 50% powerfully terran. It's, it doesn't work that way. It's within the individual that they feel this dichotomy. This, this, you know, they're, they're torn, like me, as an individual. On the one hand, you know, wow, cosmism. On the other hand, billions of people killed in a major war over this issue? What a horror. You know, they're terrified, horrified at this possibility. So, so that makes them terror. You know, they, they, they want to avoid this. They say, oh my God, we mustn't do this. We, sh we shouldn't build these artifacts. They're too, too dangerous. We don't want a major war killing everybody. You know, just, just horror. So... Uh, this, this issue really divides people. So, uh, so how, I mean, how does that play in then um, relevant to the argument of the cyborgs? Well, you're not going to get everybody lockstep changing into cyborgs at the same pace. It's just not going to happen. It's just not, it's just not practical, it's not realistic. You'll get some people racing ahead as fast as they can, you know, <laughs> as, as fast as they can go, right? And because so much of this is unknown, we don't know what the consequences will be. It, it's so complex, it's unpredictable, right? Therefore, Murphy's Law, if you're not familiar with Murphy's Law, uh, if something can, can go wrong, it will, right? So Murphy's Law will have enormous scope to play out in, in, in the future, in, in this context. Right? So Murphy's Law will really work. Things will go wrong. Things will screw up. And, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe the machines get really smart and they control the stock market or raw materials access or whatever. And something screws up and humanity really suffers. And maybe a whole series of, of, of incidents like, like this. And they turn people against the machines. So, so maybe large numbers of people go terror. Right? But then you've got other, other individuals. For, you know, people, people vary. Right? There's a whole takes all types, in a sense, to make a world. Right? So you'll have a lot of people racing their head with, with becoming uh, cyborgs, you know, wanting to, to be more and more whatever. And you just get society divided. In a sense, uh, the Terrans will feel that humanity, in a broad sense, is being destroyed. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the arguments you know, about the, the, adult, the adult children who